So here we are, and as you can see, there's a beautiful backdrop behind us. And that is because we are back in the Bahamas. That's right. If you guys remember a couple weeks ago, we were over in the Berry Islands. We brought the 24 Pathfinder over here. We just couldn't get enough. So mm -hmm. what we did is we loaded up the big boat. We had two days out of this week we had to spare. So we said, you know what? Let's pack everything up and show everyone what we didn't get to show them before. And that's the blue hole that's actually behind us here in the Berry Islands. So after that, tomorrow we have a whole day of diving planned. Tons of big lobster here, lots of big hogfish from what we experienced last time. Who knows, maybe some snappers, but ultimately we're here to put some meat in the boat and take advantage of everything that the Bahamas fishery has to offer. Look at that beautiful boat right there and for those of you that don't know that logo on the side of the boat that's actually the logo from our clothing brand avail performance gear and our shirts are upf 50 plus moisture wicking material not only are they blocking you from the sun but at the same exact time they're keeping you nice and cool but look at this trail man we are actually on our way up to the blue hole and what's so cool is you got to walk through this tight little trail up a hill in order to get there and it gets pretty steep and then once we get to the blue hole there's a cliff that you can jump off of and the blue hole is about 600 feet deep believe it or not and we actually wanted to show you guys the blue hole in our last video but our camera that we were using to film the blue hole actually fell to the bottom of it but it gave us another excuse to come back here and show you guys and it is just so cool so this is a salt water blue hole here there's an edge that rolls off right there that's probably about 40 or 50 feet and then all of a sudden it just goes straight down to 600 and who knows what's at the end all the way at the bottom. Go! Jump out, go! You! <laughs> hey! She's got <gasps> the GoPro in her hand! I kept the GoPro in my hand! Remember when you were little and your parents used to ask you if your friends jumped off a cliff, would you do it too? Well, here we go. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that is sketchy. Woo! That's awesome. Now this blue hole is located on Hoffman's K, which is only accessible by boat. There's multiple blue holes throughout the Bahamian Islands, but Hoffman's is significant for its cliffs coupled by beautiful beaches. A blue hole is basically a huge cave that can take hundreds of thousands of years to form. And back in the ice ages, sea levels were much lower than they are today. As acid rain fell from the sky, the cave was formed through a natural process called erosion. Eventually, sea levels rose and flooded the cave, which is now known as Hoffman's Blue Hole. In addition, the Berry Islands hold the most natural form of thrill left on Earth. Great fishing, spectacular diving, and jaw-dropping landscapes. So this is one of my favorite destinations here in the Berry Islands. God knows what lives in here, but to my knowledge- A lot of GoPros at right? the bottom. That's yeah. what that's what lives in here at the Blue Hole. Hence why we have these floaty wristbands. Mm -hmm. But it's really peaceful, it's beautiful, like you have these cave formations here, so. We are just gonna hang out here for the rest of the day. We will see you guys tomorrow, bright and early in the morning, and really looking forward to the day.
All right, so we just powered down and we made it to a relatively shallow area here. But I wanted to share some information with you guys that not a lot of people seem to know about the Berry Islands. And there's actually a sanctuary that wraps around Chubb Key all the way to the backside on the bank and even as far out as 6,000 feet. But I talked to a specific individual and I was told if you're caught fishing or lobstering in the sanctuary, um, they have the power to confiscate your boat. We made sure to get outside of the sanctuary and the specific area that we're at right now, um, it's about 10 feet at its shallowest point and then it rolls off to about 15 to 20 feet. And that's important whenever we're looking for lobsters because we have to dive. The coral heads and the caves and the structures here are much deeper, so yeah. we really have to spend our time, you know, checking way up inside of all of these little ledges, coral heads, but first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hop in, bring down a pole spear, see if we can get lucky first thing in the morning. Now it took some time to actually locate these lobsters and I thought it was going to be much easier than it was because we found some really great structure. But we actually found diving this was more difficult because I had to get my entire body up inside of these holes in order to try to find what we were looking for. So what we ended up doing is we made a little move to some shallower structure where we could spot these lobsters from afar without having to get our body all the way up inside of the structure. And this actually turned out to be the best bet because as soon as we made the move, we found our first lobster. I don't think you're ready for this. I want to see it. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Look at the size of that lobster. That though. is a big lobster. I got him so good, it went right out through his tail. That thing is a beast. Hurry up and get him in. Wow. I think that's about the biggest lobster you have ever caught. Biggest lobster I think I've ever caught or speared. You know. <laughs> that's how they are at the Berry Islands though, man. That is so neat. Woo, good job. Let's see what else we can find. So now that we've found one lobster, we know that a couple more probably aren't too far behind. So I did a couple more dives and I was actually able to spot this guy from the surface just because I can see his antenna sticking out right here. And that's always a dead giveaway. And I'm pretty convinced that lobster don't have the best eyesight and they're not the brightest. So with a little practice on the pole spear, it's really as simple as that. As you can see, after I shot this lobster, this barracuda came in to check us out, but he just decided to leave us alone. But typically, you don't have to worry about predators as much when it comes to shooting lobster, but when you're shooting fish, you definitely always want to have your head on the swivel. Another good one. I would say he's very similar in size. So, for those of you that don't know, this is a spiny lobster here. Spiny lobster don't have claws, but one thing I can say is you gotta make sure to wear gloves whenever you're handling these lobster. All these little spines right here, are very sharp. But one thing you do have to be careful with when it does come to being pinched is his mouth right there. As you can see, those are two little crushers, and if you get your finger caught in between there, 
it will crush your finger and I know that from experience. But you definitely, when you're handling them, you want to handle them on their backs or ultimately away from their mouths because they will get you. I'll tell you what, they sure do taste good. Baby. There's a famous saying that says, action brings action. And if you notice, a lot of the fish here on the reef are starting to get curious. Now, lobsters make a lot of noise when they feel threatened. So, just like the barracuda earlier, a mutton snapper came in to scope out the scene. Mutton snappers are always on the move, so they're definitely a difficult fish to shoot, especially on a pole spear. Now it's never that easy, but this fish wasn't thinking straight because he thought he was gonna get a free lobster meal. But the best thing to do whenever you shoot a fish like a mutton snapper or a grouper, something really with power behind its tail, you wanna let go of the pole spear, go back up, catch your breath, but obviously still keeping your eye on the fish. Once you catch your breath, go back down, grab the fish, because it's really easy for them to slip off the spear. That's my first behavior button. On a pole spear. On a pole spear too. Good job. Woo. Talk about a way to start the morning. <laughs> you know they're big when they go running off with the pole spear like he did. I was honestly afraid that he was gonna rip off because you can see that didn't go all the way through him, but it's definitely safe to say that we've had a pretty solid morning so far. You gonna get in now, Stephanie? Come on, girl, let's see what you can do. All right, so there's some lobster in there, and I'm tired of sitting on the boat. I need to get in, get in on this action. So I was really excited to finally get in. Immediately I saw life. I saw sea fans, coral, grouper, and snapper. Clay, luckily, moved to a shallower spot so I was able to take a dive. As soon as I reached the spot where the lobsters were located, I was in disbelief with how many and just how big each of these lobsters were. Once I floated to the top, I relaxed and slowed my heart rate. Once I felt I could dive back down, I went for it. I positioned my body to where I had a good shot on the lobster and then released the band and there it was. My first Bahamian lobster on the end of the pole spear. That was great. Good job, Stephanie. Woo. Here, stay put. I'm gonna see if I could get one real quick. Okay, I'm gonna bring this back to the boat. Okay. I was having a hard time seeing him, and it was dark, dark. But what if, what would have been an ideal shot would be if I would have got him in the head, but got a little bit of the tail. <laughs> but it's okay, not bad for my first time. Bolting too. Soft. That's it. That's a wrap. Definitely one of the bigger ones right here. But what's really cool is he actually just molted, which means that he just removed himself from his old shell. And now he's basically growing and forming his new one right now. But it's pretty wild. Like typically when you grab a lobster, you're used to them being very firm, very hard. They have a very hard shell typically, but as you can see, when we push on him and his body, his tail, everything, 
He's really soft. Nonetheless, he's still gonna taste great. Now, lobster regulations are a little different in the Bahamas versus the US. And in the Bahamas, you're only allowed to obtain 10 lobster per boat, and the carapace needs to be three and three eighths of an inch, which requires a larger gauge to determine if it's legal size. Another thing to note when returning to the US, the lobster must remain fully intact, meaning the tail cannot be removed. It also doesn't matter how many days in a row you've been lobstering in the Bahamas, 10 per boat means 10 per boat. When leaving the Bahamas and returning to the US, you may not possess any more than 10 lobster. In our case, we kept five, which is half of a limit and more than enough. But after a successful morning in multiple beaches to choose from, the urge to explore is beginning to kick in. Water feels awesome. It's one of the best parts about coming to the Bahamas in the summertime is the water temperatures are so high. A lot of the times if you come here in the spring, especially the winter months, you get a cool breeze. Obviously that water temperature cools down. It's not as comfortable, but us being from Florida, this is perfect. I mean, the temperature is easily in the 90s. One downside to hot water is the coral start to bleach. And believe it or not, we're actually experiencing a lot of that in the Florida Keys and over here in the Bahamas. As much as high water temperatures feel good, it can also be detrimental at the same time. But one thing I can say is when you're hanging out on a beach like this, there's really not too much to worry about. You know, I always like to take a moment whenever we're out here and just tell you guys how much we appreciate the support from you all. And that being said, that allows us to work together with companies like Chomps. You know, our sponsors help us out tremendously when it comes to these trips. But, you know, not only do they help us get here, but they've changed and benefited the way that we boat and ultimately how we eat. Because, you know, whenever we're out here filming or we're fishing, doing whatever, sometimes we genuinely forget to eat. You know, they're really filling, they're zero sugar, they're gluten-free, so they're so easy. You could stick them in a book bag, you could stick them in the cooler, but at the same exact time, you know, they use all the best ingredients and the hands are all nasty, the fish guts, you know, you don't have to worry about cleaning your hands. You just undo the wrapper just like this, you pull it out, and then your hands are never even making contact with it. But Big, big thank you to you guys. Big, big thanks to Chomps for making all of this happen. But we're just gonna keep on sitting here on this beach. Enjoy, I guess what you would call breakfast. <laughs> and then um, we're gonna get moving again, do some spear fishing. Nice club. So we just stopped here out in the Berry Islands and the reason why I chose this area, we're basically in the middle of nowhere. But when we look down, there is just live bottom everywhere. We're strictly just diving, so. And that has to do with the temperature too. I mean, yeah. it's really hot out here. <laughs> it's really hot, so getting in is, you know, probably one of my favorite things to do in the Bahamas in the summertime. And it's very refreshing. Yeah, we're gonna be going after hogfish if we could find you know, groupers, that would be great. Whatever we find, more than likely, it's gonna be big. Everything out here is just untouched, no pressure. But we never take an excess. We always have respect for these places, 
And ultimately, we want to bring our children here one day. We want to bring our children's children here one day. Your grandchildren. Exactly. <laughs> but if we completely clean this area out here, it basically robs future generations. So we're about getting some meat, having an awesome dinner, and just having a great day here in the water. So the visibility definitely looks good, which is always important because if the water is real murky, it makes it that much harder to spearfish. But in the Bahamas, you are not allowed to use spear guns. You're only allowed to use pole spears or Hawaiian slings. This is made by JBL. It's called the Shaka. I got this at Divers Direct. This isn't the best pole spear, definitely a beginner pole spear because I am a beginner spear fisherman. But we're gonna get geared up, hop in. As you can see, the bottom is just teeming with corals. And now that the skunk is off the boat, these are what I call the bonus dives. It's always so fascinating observing the beautiful colors that these animals possess, coupled with their unique structure providing shelter for vibrant biodiversity. Even though a lot of these corals are bleached, that doesn't mean that they're dead. You see, corals host algae, which provide food for the coral. In return, the corals provide protection for the algae. When water temperatures increase, the corals become stressed, which causes the algae to shed. Once the corals shed the algae, the corals lose their color and they no longer have the ability to eat. This eventually can result in death, but there is a bright side. Once the temperatures decrease in the fall and winter months, there is potential that the algae will cling back onto the corals, allowing them to recover. Additionally, scientists are taking stress-hardened corals that are able to stand the heat and relocating them into weaker areas. Scientists are hoping that the stress-hardened traits will carry over towards the weaker corals, thus making them more resilient to heat. I don't know, there's something about these Bahama hogs that they are just big. Very island hogs. Oh yeah. my god. Talk about a story. Because that was about a 50 foot dive on them initially to put the spear on them. And he ran off with the spear. If it weren't for Charles being there, who knows? That could have passed out. But more importantly, not more importantly, but we could have lost the fish. But that's why you always have a dive buddy, man. That's awesome. Dinner's gonna be good to dive, baby. Woo. All right, so let's play this back real quick. Three massive hogfish and somehow I managed to stick the biggest one. When a fish is swimming away from you, it's best to wait until they make a turn making an easy broadside shot. 
But this hogfish was on to me quick, so I just had to make a shot before he spooked off, and thank God I did. But on this next dive, I threw in some pieces of lobster to get the area chummed up, since groupers and hogfish love lobster. Now this next dive starts at 40 feet and rolls off to about 50 under this ledge. And big contour changes are prime areas to spearfish because it provides shelter where these fish like to hide. Sure enough, once I shot that last hog, this is exactly where he ran to hide. And here's one of the females that hung around. As she begins to swim broadside, she sets me up for the perfect shot. In order to increase my shot surface area, I stayed patient, descended a couple more feet trying to get level with the fish, and the patience paid off. Once I grabbed a hold of the spear, I shoved it back through the fish because I noticed she was about to slip off. The done deal, back to the top, mission accomplished. About as big as the last one. Definitely still a big one. Stephanie, you want to grab the full spear? Yep. All right, that's enough. That's a wrap. What's really unique about a hogfish is they actually change sexes. They start out as females and they eventually transition into males. And if you notice, her snout isn't very defined, whereas his snout is defined. So this is a male. And what's interesting about hogfish in the Bahamas versus where we live in the Florida Keys, hogfish in the Florida Keys transition into males much quicker than here. The reason why is because biology is taking its course and basically these fish are adapting to become males much quicker so they can reproduce with all the females. Whereas here in the Bahamas, this fish is 20 inches and it's still a female, whereas if this fish were in the Florida Keys, it would be a male by now so it can reproduce. It just goes to show how when you leave an area alone, it can be as it's intended to be. With that being said, five lobsters, mutt snapper, two hogfish is more than enough when it comes to seafood. So I would say that's a wrap on spear fishing. Definitely a successful day down here in the very Islands. heavy basket. That's how you know we had a good day. We almost just had a bad day. How's it going, my friend? Good, good, can't complain. One of the best parts about catching and eating lobster is they're so easy to prepare and eat. And basically what we're gonna do with this guy is we're gonna take our knife and we're gonna cut all of this meat out right here. And what we're left with is the tail. So what's nice about having a good flexible fillet knife. And as you can see, we're gonna eat all that meat inside of here. And we're gonna take an antenna from one of the lobsters. And if you look closely at the antenna, it's barbed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, stick it right up here, push it all the way up, and then we're gonna use the barbs to pull out that vein there. Right now, he is ready to eat. What yeah. we got? What so are we doing? I'm gonna be making a lobster pasta with herb parmesan sauce. So it's pretty simple. All you're gonna do first is just poach the lobsters to remove the lobster from the tail or the shell. And then once you're done with that, you're gonna make the sauce, mix the lobster meat into it, and then you're gonna pour it over some pasta. And I chose fettuccine just because that's what I like. Feeling fettuccine? I'm feeling like a little fettuccine. 
The recipe sounded great, but when I saw everything together, I was like kind of hesitant, but came out really good. Awesome, good job. Mm -hmm. But we appreciate you guys more than you know. Huge thanks to Chomps for getting us here. Yeah. Like we said, but till then, see you guys next time. Bye guys.